three, two, one, let's go. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Edge Mindset Podcast. Today we're blessed to have a local lad, grew up in Pontefract, business owner, homeowner, investment, letting, you name it, the one and only Andrew Rowley. What's up, bro? Oh, thanks, Jesse. Uh, not been called a lad for some time. Obviously, at my age, uh, that's nice. I appreciate that. Uh, but great to be here. Uh, first time I've ever done anything like this. Uh, so it's all new to me, but new's good. Yeah. Look, man, um, I just still remember meeting you for the first time, um, getting off the plane. Uh, could have been seven years ago now um, when I signed with Castleford. And, um, you know, I was lucky to be you know, put across to good hands. Um, we got here, the house was ready, furnished, and, um, you know, very blessed to have that. Um, do you want to just speak about how, how you always, you know, you've always been helping out the rugby lads um, for certain clubs and how that all started for you? Yeah, I mean, um, I played back in the day uh, some time ago with Sheffield, played with uh, that old pal when, they, when he was there. Um, Always been interested in rugby. Always been interested in any, any sport. Um, but I kind of got involved with the rugby side. Uh, don't know that I'm allowed to mention his name when uh, when around Castleford. But Denny was probably the first player I got involved with. Denny Solomona. Oh yeah. He came over. Uh, I'd had involvement back in the day. I used to be a car salesman and uh, I used to run dealerships. Mm-hmm. We've done some sponsorships with Brendan Tutor, uh, mm. obviously Twin and a Cow, uh, Francis Leota, all names blast from the past, yeah. Fran Obotica. So I've been involved with uh, rugby players in general, but this came about when Denny came on board. Castleford reached out to me, asked me if I could look at anything. I was always a bit unsure because rugby players at the time had got a bit of a name for <laughs> partying. But I was assured that uh, you know this guy Denny was was different and and fair play he was uh, and that started the relationship with uh, with Castleford uh, initially mm. um, so we housed Denny and then we housed more and more players and um, obviously yourself came over and that's where we first met um, which were great I, I, I just enjoy meeting the guys from over there I've got really good friends now. I play golf with, I socialise with, um, I just enjoy the, the meeting of you guys. Um, and it's just different to speak to people, again, like yourself. I'm learning about what you do, you learn what I do, and hopefully some of the stuff that rubbed off from me yeah. has rubbed off on you, and vice versa. Definitely, definitely. Um, can we, you know, can you tell us a bit about like where? business started for you in your life and then where you are today? Yeah, I mean, I've always, uh, people call it uh, being an entrepreneur or whatever you want to call it. I've always had a feeling for doing a deal. Initially, it was always with cars. When I was 16, 17, I'd buy cars, I'd sell cars. I enjoyed cars. Then as I got older, uh, I bought myself, when I was playing rugby part-time, I bought myself a milk round. Built the milk round up, sold the milk round on, made money on what's it. A, what's a milk round? So back in the day, Jesse, which you probably <laughs> won't remember, <laughs> you used to leave a little note out and it'd say on your doorstep that I wanted three pints of milk. Oh. And the milkman would deliver three pints of milk. It still happens today. It still, still happens, happens today, today. Yep. but not, not a lot. as much. Yep. Yeah, supermarkets came on board. Big six litres, that's where the industry went down. Mm. So I got out at the right time. But that was my first dipping into a business. Mm. So working for myself and understanding that actually I can make money and be my own boss. Yeah. So I've done lots of things. I've, I've, I've been up at Hartlepool United Football Club. Uh, looking after the commercial side of things, so I got involved with, with sports, with a professional sports club. Uh, I've dealt with solicitors, um, accident management, and then we kind of uh, fell on, and this is myself and my really good friend, Craig Hewitt, 
a business partner. We've done everything together. We do everything together. Uh, we went into, well, we've got our own houses. We let them out. We employ people to manage them. They're not doing the job. Let's do it ourselves. Mm. So we set off from a, a little office. And we set off with probably 10 houses. Uh, today, we manage 550, 600 houses. Nice. So that evolved. Yeah. But that's how we really started. And it, my kind of point is, if you see something and you want to get there, you've got to go for it. You're never going to get a second chance. There's so many people out there that said, oh, I had that idea. Oh, I could have done that. But you didn't. And me, I can hand on out tell you, not everything works. <laughs> I have had so many failures. But you just get up, dust yourself down, and move on. Knocking enough doors, somebody's going to answer. Okay, then. Well, what's one of the biggest failures, you reckon, that taught you the um, biggest thing that turned up? I think... I think failure is probably something that you put on yourself. Mm. So you see it as a failure. Other people might not see it as a failure. So we decided that we needed uh, another shop. So we invested in a shop. We wanted to buy one out of area in South Emsall because we looked like we could take the market. Everything didn't line up because the lady that we got on board to run the shop, unfortunately, she got really ill. Uh, she had to stop working, so we didn't have anybody to manage it. Then it was a bit more of a chore mm. to actually service it. And it got to be a bit of a hassle. So we made the decision, it's not worked. Close it. Cost you some money, but you start again. Mm. So... I see it as a failure. The yeah. other people might just go, well, you know, it's bad luck. Wow, yeah, I, I actually went to that shop. You did? Yeah. And um, South Ems was, like, it's a nice place. It is. The great might. people. Yeah. Great people. Yeah. But the look, everything wasn't lined up. Mm. So it didn't work. Wow. And do, do you have, like, a process that you go through when, when these kind of things happen? Is there something you do? Is there a release? Yeah. We, we Look, we, we signed a, a two-year lease, uh, or should I say a five-year lease with a two-year break. Mm. So I would always say, for anybody that's looking, make sure, always look at worst-case scenario. Best case is great. Worst case is more realistic. Mm. So worst case, if it didn't work, at two years, we can go. And that's what happened. If we decided up for a five-year lease at a lower rent, thinking that, oh, we're so good and everything's going to work and everything we touch is great, we'd have been financially in ruin. Mm. Having a shop that wasn't open that we were paying for. So, again, when you're looking in business, always look at what's the worst thing that can happen because that's more likely than the best thing. Yeah. Anything above it, bonus. <laughs> um, it's Pretty, pretty good advice that you know. Um, obviously, I'm I'm just stepping into that that um, part of my transition or life, and um, you know I've come to you a few times with you know a bit of advice, and I can honestly say you know with some of the decisions I've made with with the pubs and and um, and stuff like um, if it wasn't for the advice you gave me, you know I, uh, I think I'll be still ruining myself and running myself down. But, um, yeah, it's good to have, you know, someone like yourself that's been in the game for so long. You know, how many, how many years has it been in business? In business, um, since I was 21 years old. Mm. So quite a few years. <laughs> <laughs> 35. Can you relate um, business and sport in terms of mentality together? Yeah, I think um, that a lot of sportsmen can turn their hand to business because... They are so regimented at goals. Mm. So to achieve your goal in sport, you have to put that work in. It's no difference in business. I like it. Unless you're willing to put that time in. And in sport, sometimes natural ability can get you over the line. Mm. In business, that won't happen. So that's the difference. You have to train all the time. 
to be the best. Yeah. That's the only advice I can give to somebody is you're not having it given to you. Mm-hmm. Nothing comes for free, not in business. Yeah, like I, ever since we've met, you know, I've always looked at you like a go-getter, um, the ideas man. And, um, you know, where, where does this come from? Where does this, this kind of... When you say ideas, I, I, I honestly, I know all the time I am thinking about ideas and my wife will say to me, why are you just, just calm down? <laughs> You're always looking at the next thing. And, you know, I have lots of ideas and sometimes you have that many that you can't put them into practice, you can't do everything. Um, but some of the best ideas, if you actually see them through, they're the ones that have come to fruition. Mm. So, you know, the things that we've done, you know, and it's not just me, you know, it's all about the team that you've got. You know, at the moment, we, when I say we, I'm talking about logic and the, the real estate business, the sales side of things, I have, hand on heart, got the best team you could ever want. And they reflect everything I want. So I can't get any better than that. Mm. It's the people that you've got around you. Surround yourself with good people that have the same beliefs as you. You can't go wrong. Yeah, that's powerful. That's powerful. That is very sports-like. When coaches sign players, they got to sign them so they match the team, not the team match them. So that's a pretty powerful way. And, um, you know, we, we always speak about... Um, your holiday home in Spain. <laughs> go <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. Um, obviously, every every chance you get, you go. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. What, what, what's the story behind having your own holiday home? What What's the positive things about it? Yeah. Well, I, I think for for us, uh, initially in life, we we always did long hauls, so we'd always spend the time in America. We used to go to Las Vegas every single October. 10 years on the bounce and those long hauls now since we've got the place in spain and we've just moved into a new home over there which we're really lucky Uh, it's beautiful Uh, we're going there tomorrow my daughter's there with the kids that's the thing it's a home for the kids it's a home from home so as opposed to being in a hotel room when you've got small children and they want to sleep You've got to sit, one of the parents has got to sit in that room. You'll know that you're missing out. They go in the home, my daughter, son-in-law, will be sat outside, sunbathing, while they're having a sleep. Mm. Home from home. Yeah. That's that's the thing. And we know that we pack up, we've got a rucksack on our backs, everything's there, we've got bikes, everything that we need. Golf clubs, most important, they're all there. So, Does it help the mind? Yeah, yeah, easier. You know, you will know going on holiday with kids is stressful. Yeah. Really stressful. There's no stress. Even both my daughters and their husbands and their kids go out there and it's it's chilled out. It's nice and easy, which is great. That's yeah. what a holiday should be. Yeah, that's good. Family first thing. Absolutely. What drives you, Andrew? Um, I've always got a goal, and I think, um, in fact, I was speaking with uh, Joey this morning while we were playing golf. Well, while I was beating Joey <laughs> at golf, so. <laughs> sorry, Joey. <laughs> but we were speaking about, you know, you've got to have a target, you've got to have an aim, because if you don't have a target or an aim, it's quite easy just to sit down and do nothing. So dr- the drive for me is, testing myself mm. each time. Can I do that? Can I do that bit more? Even if I'm running or I'm at the gym, I want to do that bit more. I want to be better than that person on the side of me. Not because I want to beat them, because I want to test myself. Can I do that? And I think that's the same in business. Can I? And I've learned lots from lots of different people that I've worked with, uh, that have been my bosses. And what I always say to everybody is, Look at the really good points out of somebody that you've met. Take that, take that, take that, and then you've got all the good bits. Even even the sayings that ex sales managers have I've listened to them and thought, that's really good to ask somebody, mm. isn't that? Take them and use them because 
that knowledge that you've got is power. Yeah, that's good, man. That's really good. You don't really get that at um at uni, eh? You yeah. can't learn that at uni. Listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying to anybody out there, don't study. Absolutely, just that I just wasn't wasn't good at school. Um, you know, I uh, was more interested in sport. What are your goals now at this time of your life? Um, probably at the moment is golf. Yeah, I just <laughs> I, I, I just really enjoy my golf. I enjoy the time that I've got with my pals. Um, you know, it's it's another challenge because mm. I still want to be better than the next person, and that's never going to change. Yeah, yeah, you either are competitive. But I can't take a round and look at it and go, oh, do you know what? They're beating me. I don't mind Bibi. That's fine. The next time they won't. <laughs> you try. Um, I also know you coached um, Carlton Hotel football team. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So you've done a bit of coaching as well? I did. Well, not only Carlton. So previous to that, uh, my daughter played uh, soccer. Um, so I took over with my brother-in-law. We took over uh, St. Joseph's Coyotes under sevens girls team, and I took them all the way through to open age. Oh wow! Um, so that was something from young children to young women. Trust me, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> you see every emotion yeah. that is there, and like I say, Carlton Hotel. Uh, we coached. Uh, we coached there. There some great times. Uh, we won the county cup, which I think was one of the only um, the only Sunday league teams that actually won the county cup. So I think that's that was quite hard to do. But that's the time when I was at Hartlepool United, and we were great because we always used to have Hartlepool United's old kits. Talking about it. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I'm onto the mic. <laughs> so we would always uh, always have the best kits. So we'd have. Football league footballs. Oh, wow. We'd have the uniform from the previous season, so we always look the best. Man, just just listening now, you know, um, everything you do is one hundred. If you're gonna do it, you're gonna go full steam ahead, and um, it's very detailed, isn't it? It's detailed too. But you have to, <laughs> if you're gonna do something, don't go in half cocked, mm. because you're only gonna get half the benefit. Yeah. Going all, and if it fails, it fails. Well, you know you've had a real good go at it. Yeah. Too many people for me to say I could have. I had that. I could have. I might have done that. I had the chance to do this. If you want to do it, and it's possible, then that's great. But you do need the backing from your missus as well. Mm. You know, because irrespective, you've got to make sure they're happy. And my wife is very cautious. In business, I'm probably the other way. Yeah. And sometimes she hold me back. She's the boss, eh? But it's right. Yeah, they're always the boss. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> and I can't say any different because it's true. But sometimes it's that second opinion. Mm. So she said, well, you've always done okay before, but then something might not work. But she's not going to say, I told you so. Yeah. Because we're all together. together. Yeah, yeah. It sounds very familiar to the way you do business. Good team at in, in business is also a good team at home. Yeah. So how do you how do you keep everything? What do you call it? Afloat. How does every how do you, that's a hard thing that I struggle. Yeah. With. I, I think there's a. So I'm now at that time where I don't have a lot in my head. I'm really lucky, and I always relate things back to golf. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry if I'm going on about golf. Golf is good, but but. It's relative. So I look at when I used to play, when I was working more hands-on, day-to-day with the lettings, my phone would be ringing, ringing, ringing. Mm. Then I couldn't play because my mind wasn't 100%. Golf, you have to be 100% switched off. Now I can put my phone in my bag. I wouldn't even think of looking at it during the round. And my only thing that I'm thinking about is the next shot. Yeah. And I play better. So I'm quite a lucky person that I don't 
overthink things. So I think that's lucky. Mm. There's people that overthink and, and then you can worry too much about what might happen. If it happens, it happens. Mm. So that's what I think any advice to people is don't overthink, don't overcomplicate stuff. Be in the moment. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, our last guest um, left the question for our next person, which is yourself. And the question was, what are you doing today that's inspiring the next generation? Good question. Is that Tyler? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't profess to, to know everything about everything. And I think the way I'd answer that is, there's always somebody that knows more than you. Mm. There's always somebody that can do something probably better than you. If you've got the ability to listen to that person and draw information from that person and utilize their knowledge, then that's what I would do. Mm. I would draw off other people who have been on a journey, that have done it. Again, there's a lot of people that you mix with the older people. They've been there, they've done that. Yeah. So listen to them and they'll tell you, and they'll be quite happy to tell you, that didn't work, but that worked. Who was that for you growing up? Um, I think there's, the, I've always, every place that I've worked or worked for, I've always drawn off the people there. Mm. So it can be, you know, a good friend of mine, and you know Russ from uh, Russ Green. Oh, yeah. So he was chief executive at Liverpool United, learnt off him. I learnt off my first sales manager while I was selling cars, Brendan Riley. I just, a guy called Adrian, who was a solicitor, listened very well educated, really good friend of mine, who you know, uh, Rich mm. as well. Which has done really well in business, and I've drawn out every little bit of information that you can get off them, yeah. and just can you use it in your day to day? Mm. Because listen to other people. Yeah, the observer. Well, because <laughs> today we have so much content online, and like every businessman is online now. You know, like you got your Grant Cardone's, your Gary V's, and like you can actually follow day to day and what they do. And obviously, yourself, you, you're not into social media yet, but we're going to get yet. you there. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get you there. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you probably had to be around the right people at the right time and put yourself in them rooms that yeah. you know, could, could get you places. It, it, but it's not, it's not just lucky. Mm. You know, a lot of people out there will say, oh, yeah, I know so-and-so, so-and-so. They've been really lucky. <laughs> no, they haven't been lucky. Yeah. They've worked really hard. There's a difference. Mm. If you work hard and you've got that goal, you'll get there. It's not luck. Sometimes you have a little bit of luck that helps you on your way. Mm. It's on a healthy man. Joey says you have a lot of luck in golf. Yeah, he would, Joey would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> what's what's your question for our next podcaster? Um, my question would be, if you could change anything that you've done in your life that was bad thing yep. and turn it around to be a positive, what's that? What's that thing? That bad thing that could have been so different. So there's always, people always have something bad, but it could have been so different. Wow, That's okay, I got ya, I got ya. So just before we go off, you know, just wanna um, ask you what businesses you're in now and, you know, let people know how they can contact them and how they can reach out and connect. Yeah, so uh, anybody that knows of us, so we were born as Logic Lettings, so we property manage for private individuals, um, landlords, singular multiple landlords uh, around the Pontefract, Doncaster areas. Um, Come and look after, like I say, around about the five, 550. We also now have a real estate uh, that sell properties. Uh, again, great teams in both look after you. So anything you want to know, you can log on to the Logic Group, 
dot uk mm. uh, you can look at our websites there anything you want to do you can have online chats they're all there uh, and one big thing is that uh, i could probably announce today as it should go hopefully live today so we've now taken over the Pontefract 10k run so anybody that thought it was the last year last year you thought wrong 19th of may next year the Pontefract 10k is back on We've got sponsors, new sponsors on there. Ridley and Hall Solicitors have kindly sponsored the whole event. We're doing a corporate challenge for teams of three. Uh, this is going to be the Smith Ayer Trophy that we're going to run for. And we're just going to challenge every business out there. Do you think you're the best? Because if you think you're the best, get your three best runners, get yourself on that, Let's see who's going to be the best. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. Andrew, it's been awesome to have you on. Um, I really appreciate your time, and I really appreciate our friendship, you know. it's um, It means a lot to me, and especially my family. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of people who watch this going to get a lot of value, and um, we're just blessed to have you in the room today. So appreciate that. Appreciate uh, being invited, Jesse. And, you know, this is my first time <laughs> on anything like this. So... Let's see how it comes across. <laughs> one take, one take. Let's go.